Hello, I hope you are doing great. Today we are going to see how to use interfaces and dependency injection in .NET Core. But before we start, please subscribe to the channels and click the bell so you get notifications when a new video is added. Also, please share the channel in your social networks and the videos too. Thank you very much. Okay, so how do we use dependency injection and interfaces in .NET Core? One of the ways to add our interfaces and our classes implementation to the .NET Core dependency injection uh, engine is to use the services class. It has some methods so we can add, for example, singleton um, instances. So you will do something like um, services dot add uh, singleton and you pass the instance and then you set your constructors in your uh, controllers so actually yeah in your constructors so they receive that um, class or the interface you did add. in this case today we are going to talk specifically about some uh, bad techniques that are commonly used when using interfaces actually one bad technique okay what is an interface an interface is basically a set of signatures that you that you are going or need to have to implement in the classes which make use of that interface so basically every single class that uses the interface is forced to have those methods and their own implementations based on the actual class functionality now some bad technique that i have seen in a lot of dotnet core examples is that they add dependency injection and they add a class mapping it to a specific class this actually removes one of the best features of the interfaces, which is being able to be implemented by, multi by multiple classes. Meaning, you may, if you use an interface, you actually should have more than one use for it. Otherwise, Probably the interface makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. You are basically wasting the actual functionality of the interface because you are not implementing it more than once. You are only having one implementation of that specific interface. Okay, so basically in in the examples, what they do a lot of people actually is at services dot at singleton they said with generics they said the actual interface come and the um, actual class if you add more than one class to the same interface in the add service in this at transient or at singleton when you receive that interface in your controller in, in a constructor you will receive actually the last um, the last class that was added so basically the first ones that you added for that same interface are lost you have no access to them with the default implementation and the default samples and as far as I know there is no overload or, met or additional methods so you can specify something like a key or something like that so you can um, get it um, easily one of the actual ways that many people do is actually receiving an enumeration of the interface and then comparing which is actually not that good either because then you may have some knowledge of the actual implementation class type in your um, 
in your constructor, in your controller, whenever you are going to use the actual uh, object. Okay, so one of the things we need to do is we can use a trick, which is basically adding the classes as transient singleton, whoever you need them, and then we will add a transient for a function which will receive a uh, string. That actually allows us to receive this function specification as a parameter in our constructors. And then what we do is, okay, in the add transient, we implement the actual code to retrieve the actual um, implementation for the interface based on a key. So if the key is online, we return an online store that we retrieve from the service. If we use physical, we retrieve a physical store from the service. And since we are using, uh, we need to return something, we are going to return a default if there is no key at all. And the default for this case, we are just going to assume that it is the online store. This allows us to have this uh, parameter definition in the controller, and this is going to be the uh, variable that we can use to retrieve the actual instance based on a key. So if I want to get the online store class, I can get this. And if I can get physical store class, I can get this by sending a key. And they are actually both a store. So once I retrieve it, I don't really care which is the actual type for them. So I could have this probably configured in the APP settings or somewhere, somewhere else based on database configuration, however we want to set it. So the application doesn't really know uh, the actual um, the actual type and it just work with the interface. Okay, and if you see, if I run the application and I go to <clears throat> an endpoint for that controller, it will hit first the constructor, the constructor will be that function, and when I retrieve this, <coughs> you see that this online store is actually of the type online store and uh, the physical is actually from the type physical store. So that's one of the correct ways to use interfaces with dependency injection. Remember, if you are going to use an interface, you should have more than one implementation class for that interface Otherwise, the interface really makes no sense at all in your application. Thank you very much. I hope you liked the video. Remember to subscribe and share the channel and the videos and like. Have a great day.